Here we have the universal set. The universal set is like the hat with all the numbers in it, right? That's what we have to choose from. And it's the whole numbers less than or equal to 14. So what number do we start at? Zero, because the number of the whole, right? Zero, and then do we go to 14 or not? Yes. yes, because it says equal to. So we have to make sure we read. Whole numbers means we... I need to make sure I grab a pen. Um, whole numbers means starts the number with a whole, and then less than or equal to 14. So I know my universal set inside this new this Venn diagram is going to have to have the number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If you don't write these up here, it's not a big deal. You just make sure you have them all in your Venn diagram, right? I'm just showing them to you. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right. A are the prime numbers. What's my very first prime number? Two. It's also the only even. even. Is one prime? No. no. Is one composite? No. no. It just kind of floats itself into the world of a bitch. It's neither of those things. It's an odd number. It's lovely, but it isn't composite or prime. So remember that prime starts at two, and then because it's the factor of that number itself has to have two factors. So we have two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen. Then factors of 9 are what? Multiply to give me 9, and so what are they? 1, 3, and 9. So, remember that the eyeball in the middle of the Venn diagram represents what? And, so where the intersection, where the two exist, right? And intersection, exactly. So what number falls in the middle? And that's it, correct? Then I go to the A, and I plug in everything else that's in A, but not three, right? And I'm going to put a little dot so that I know it's not three elements, but it actually is the number three, okay? Then I have two, five, seven, eleven, thirteen. And then over here, I have one and nine. And then I told you guys there's always four places that numbers need to go for a Venn, two-circle Venn diagram. Four places. Most people will remember the inside of the circles, but most people will forget they have to fill in all the rest of the numbers into the inside of the box, but outside the circles, right? So one is already used, two, three. I have four out here. Five, six out here. Seven's already used, eight out here. Nine's already used, ten out here. Eleven is used, twelve, and then fourteen. So it has to have all of the numbers. We agree? Yeah. Been there the whole time. I don't know what you're talking about. If we roll back the tapes, it's totally it wasn't there. But that's it's totally fine. It's in blue. So how do we know? You know, yeah. the recording would say differently, but we're not. No, it's totally. I was gonna. I'm a genius. Okay, A and B. Do I put just one? Because there's one in A and B. No, because does it ask for the number of elements in A and B, or does it just say A intersection B? It says A intersection B, so I have to list all the elements, correct? If I ask for the number of elements or I have a little N in front, then I would say 1, but that is not what it's asking. And how do I know it's AND? Because remember I said if we can write the word AND out of the symbol, we know it's AND. So it's AND. So it's going to be, squiggly bracket, the set of values, which just happens to only be 3. What is this symbol? It's union, and what does it mean? OR. So if it's in either OR, and what's OR on a Venn diagram? What shape? Snowman, the whole snowman, including its stomach. So, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. Then we want A and not B. What did I tell you when there's an and and then a not? What shape do we get? Crescent moon, correct? When we have this intersection with a not, we get a crescent moon on this letter. because This is the one that's included, correct? So basically that's saying A only, isn't it? If it's a crescent moon, that's A only. So we list the ones that are in A only. So that's this crescent moon here. Right? We're listing those. A only. A but not B. So it's going to be 2, 5, 7, 11, and 13. 2... 5, 7, 11, 13. 
So this gives me the crescent moon. A crescent moon. I really need to look. All right. Now, this one is A or not B. Is that a crescent moon? No, it's not a crescent moon. It's or. So watch yourself. If it's an or, if it's an A or it's in not B, I write it. Correct? Well, it's the only one I don't have written out is a complement to B. So I'm going to write the complement to B to help myself out. So I know A was, it was just the prime numbers, right? So A was... 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and 13. So because it's an or, do you see how it's an or? All of those are in it. Yes? Cool. 2, 3, I'm not writing these in order, I don't really care. 5, 7, 11, and 13. But what also is in his, this? All the not Bs, correct? And if I want, I can write out not B as well if I would like to. It's just not... 1, 3, and 9. So 2, 3, 4, 3. I just said 1, not 3, and 9, and then I wrote a 3. 2, not 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, not 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, right? So I still need to write all the numbers that are in this as well, because if it's in one or the other, I list it. Yes? So I've already listed 2. I still need 4. I've already listed uh, 5. I need 6, I already listed 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 14. Do you see how I did it on orthodox and not in order, but still right? Yeah. I always keep forgetting the zero. Anyone? Bueller? I have a problem with zero. It's a lovely number. It means nothing. I can't even, like, fix this. Keep that one. I really don't want to write zero for some unknown reason. Very important though that you have that zero because it's totally wrong if you don't. Sometimes I tell you. Scary. Okay. Now, when they're both negated, it's actually harder to do it if you leave them both negated. So when I see not A, not B, I'm like, well, thank you very much, but no thank you. I don't like this form. You suck. I'm changing it every single time. When I see not A, not B, I'm like, oh, that's great. I don't care. Um, so then I like it when it's completely negated. So I just go A, B. I put the negation or the complement outside. And what I tell you we have to remember to do? Flip it, correct? So if it's an intersection, it's now a union. Now people are like, how is that any easier? Yeah. It is. This is A or B. What shape is that? That's a snowman, correct? Oh my gosh, why? This should be... Okay, cool, we have snowman. So, if A or B is the snowman, I want... What? What does this mean? Not the snowman, which is completely mathematical terms. If you use not snowman on the diploma, they're going to have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. But what we want is what's not in the snowman. So we want everything on the outside. Is that easier to understand than this? Not A and not B? I'm like, I don't know, that's overwhelming. But if I rewrite it with the negation outside and I switch it, it's either going to be not the snowman or not the eyeball, right? If it's an and, then it means it's the eyeball. I want what's not in the eyeball. If it's an or, it's the snowman. I want what's not in the snowman. So if you have both of them negated, I always rewrite it. So I want what's not in the snowman, which is zero. I'm going to write that one first because I'm having a little rough go with that. Zero, four, six, eight. Help me. Zero, four, six, eight. Oh, it's just even. Look at that without the two. Pretty. Okay, is B a subset of A? What does subset mean? It means the symbol. What does it mean? Everything in B would be in A. Is that true? Is everything in B and A? What's actually the only thing? Three. Three is the only thing in B that's in A. So you would say, no. The only value...
Um, in B, that is found in A. In three. If they ever say justify, you have to justify why, right? You can't just. So I always explain myself, even if it doesn't say justify. Determine two sets that result in an empty set. Are there any two sets that result in an empty set? What? A and B. Complement. That's the only one. The actual set and itself. It's complement of it. That's it. So if I do A and B, point out, if I did A and B, if you want to know if something is an empty set, you have to do the intersection of it, correct? A and B results in the empty set. Is that true? No. What does it result in? Three. Three. So that's not true. But... Um, the universal set and A would result in what's in A. The universal set and B would result in what's in B. So that's not good either, because those are not empty. But if I did A and the complement of A, what would it result in? Yeah, that empty set. Yeah? Um, can you do a complement of the universal set? No, because the universal set's the big one that you're looking at. Yeah. <laughs> So another one would be B and the complement of B. Yeah? So you're saying, try again. Let me look at the letters. B intersection bracket A complement intersection B complement. So this would be not in the snowman and in B? If you made your own because it wasn't yeah. super clear, like say you said C is this and B is this, that would be totally fine. Oh, okay. yeah. If you went that route, because it didn't say use, using the previous set. So if you made it your own, totally fine as long as they have nothing in common. Yeah. yeah. But they would still have to be in the universal set, correct? All right, we're going to go to our notes. Remember I told you to finish these ones up? We're going to them. Example 8. So the universal set is the numbers 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 15 have to appear somewhere in that box. Could be in the circles, could not be. Correct? A is 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. B is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. What's going to go in the middle of A and B? What's in the intersection? 6 and 12. Okay. Remember, we always have to do the eyeball first because it's the overlap between the two. So we have to always do that overlap first. Then we can go to the singles what's left over. Correct? Every single time. We have no other choice. You can try and do it a different way. It's going to go badly. Okay? We do the overlap first because it's the part that they both have and we have to show that. And then we put the singles on the outside. So A still has left uh, 3, 9, and 15. And remember I said I'm putting the dots because when I put the dots I'm putting that that's in a specific element number, not that there are 13 there. Alright. Then B would have 2, 4, 8, 10, and 14. And then often we forget about the outside. We still have to put the ones that didn't occur in either of them. Correct? So 2 is in, 3 is in, 4 is in, 6 is in, 8 is in, 9 is in, 10 is in, 12 is in, 14 is in, and 15 is in. So the outside actually is empty. Because both of those encompass every number. Correct? All right. Determine the number of elements and label with set notation. In, and so it says the number of elements and label with set notation. The hardest thing in 30-2 is reading. And I'm not even joking. You guys will bypass and think you, you know what I want and then just don't read the stuff. So we have to read everything that's there, okay? 
because there's a lot of words in 30-2. There legitimately is. So it's not like the words are hard or anything. You guys just think, I know exactly what she wants. I've seen this before. But then you don't read. Okay, so we have to read everything that's on our page. So determine the number of elements and label with set notation. So we want the number of elements in set A. This is our set notation. Number of elements in set A. How many are in A? Five. Five. Done. So that's my labeling, and that's the number of elements in then 2 says, in set A, but not, remember, but not, we can use an and, I told you that. So the number of elements, elements, yep, elements in set A, but not in set B. Remember when we have this, what is this shape? Crescent moon for A, correct? When you have that intersection. How many are in the crescent moon A? Three. Set B, so the number in B. Set B, it doesn't say B only, it doesn't say B and not A, it says B. So in the whole B circle, if I add them all up, how many do I have? Seven. Seven. Then we have the number of elements in B, but not A. So once again, we're sitting with the crescent moon situation, correct? B only is what it is. And how many? Five. Five. Then in set A and B, what shape is A and B? The eyeball. So how many are there in the eyeball? Two. The number of elements in set A, I just did it again, set. So I wrote an S. Woo! Really, whoa, now it's blue, cool. A or B? Shape is a snowman. How many are in there? Ten. And then we, have, we want the number of elements in not A. So whenever we're given just a not something, we go to that, we cover it up A with our hand, and we count everything else. How many is it? Five. It's actually the same as B only, right? In this case, because only because the outside doesn't have anything. Okay, then we're going to flip over. Yeah. Go for it. All right. Here we have, there are 38 students in, grade, in the grade 12 class. That's important because that means that inside this Venn diagram, in all four spots, I should add up to 38. Do you agree? All four spots. That means all the circles and the outside should add up to 38. We know that. The number of students in the drama club and band are illustrated in the Venn diagram below. Use the or Venn diagram. Use the diagram to answer the following questions with proper set notation. So once again, we need set notation. That's the A and B or whatever. Now, is there 38 already in that all those places? What's 11 plus 8? 17 19. Oh my gosh. Plus 6 is 25. And that is not 38. So we're shy a little. How many are we shy a little? 13. So we have to remember to fill that 13 on the outside. Always check. Whenever we're filling in a two-circle Venn diagram, four spots should be filled in. If three are filled in, you have not done enough. Two-circle Venn diagrams are four spots. Uh, Three-circle Venn diagrams are eight, which we're going to start talking about this more. So how many students are in both the drama club and band. Now I can use D and B because they've labeled them. Do you see how they labeled D and B? So I can use D and B. I don't have to just use the words. So I want drama and band. The number of people in drama and band. How many are in drama and band? What, what shape is and? The eyeball, which is? Eight. How many are student? How many students are in the drama club, but not so that's a and not band. So we want the number of students in drama club, but not band. Once again, we have the and symbol and the not. So what does this mean? What shape? What shape is this going to be? Crescent moon, and it's going to be the D crescent moon, correct? So how many is it? Eleven. 
How many are in band but not drama? So we have that and not thing again going on. So this is the crescent moon, but for which one? Band, correct? So what's it, so basically they're asking for band only. Whenever you get crescent moons, it's band only or drama only. This one is band only. They could have said it that way. And it is six. Then we have C. How many students are in drama club? Does it say drama club only? Or does it say drama club? Drama club. So that's the number in D. How many is that going to be? 19, because we have to add up the whole drama club circle, right? I don't care that eight of them were in band two, they're still in drama club. So that's a total of 19. How many are in band? 14, because I have to add up every child who takes band. I don't have discrepancies that they're in drama as well. I don't really care. They just have to be in band. So I count up every single person who's in band. These eight are in band, those six are in band, and that's 14 in band. Okay? If I said band only, I would have to make a discrepancy and say that it would be six and not include the ones who were in um, drama. How many students are in at least one of the drama club or band? At least one. At least one means they could be in one or two. People get overwhelmed with how to write that. What am I actually asking you for? What shape? Yeah, I'm here in the Venn diagram, which is what shape? Snowman, what, should, what, is the, what is the set notation for a snowman? Yeah, the union, the or. So I'm literally just asking you to go the number of elements in D union B, which is 25. How many students are in neither? How do I say neither really easily? I want what's not in the what? Snowman. I want not in the snowman. That's neither. That's outside the snowman. If I want everything outside of outside of the Venn diagrams, I want everything outside of the snowman. So I can go, okay, the snowman is D or B, and I want everything outside of it. So I want what's not in there. And that would be 13. The quickest way to say neither is to say I don't want the snowman. I want everything else. So I do my snowman and not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, example 10. Anna surveyed 45 students. This is very important because that's the total. About their favorite sports, she recorded results below. 20 like hockey, 14 soccer, 16 neither. So it's hockey and soccer that we're comparing, so that's two circles. We have to be able to just decide if two or three as of now. It's only two because I taught you three. But tomorrow we start three. So we have to watch and see how many we're comparing. We're comparing hockey and soccer. So I'm only allowed to write H and S if I give myself um, a let statements or a legend that says H represents hockey, S represents soccer. If I do not do that, I have to write out all the words on the Venn diagram, all the words, all the letters of the word hockey. So hockey, soccer. What if I wrote them the other way? Would it matter? Why are we switching to sports? If I swap those words, does it matter? No. They'll just be opposite numbers. Not a big deal. Where do we have to start? In the middle. Did this one give me the middle? Did we talk about yesterday how to find the middle? Yes. Okay, so we have 45 students and we have 16 on the outside. So if I go 45 minus 16, I'm left with 19 to fill the circles. We're going to do this. <laughs> 20. There we go. 29 to fill the circles. How many said that they are taking hockey and soccer? Hockey or soccer, not hockey and soccer. 34, correct? So 34 people walked up to me and said, I'm taking hockey or soccer. There's 34 who did that, correct? 34 people or is it 34 tickets got put in? 34 tickets got put in. How many people walked up to me and told me that they played hockey or soccer? 29 people. That's all I have left for the circles. Correct? I have 29 people left for the circles. And how many tickets got put in? 34 tickets. So how many put in double tickets? Five. 
If you think about it as tickets and people, it's not as hard. If you write tickets on your diploma, they're going to be like, I have no idea what this child is. Why are they, why are they bringing tickets into this? But that's the way I think about it that makes it a little easier. I know that 34 tickets were put in, correct? 20 for hockey, 14 for soccer, 34 tickets were put in, correct? I just, I only know though that if I take that 16 off to that 45, I have 29 people left to fill in these circles, but I know 34 tickets were put in. That's five extra tickets than people, correct? So five people put in, I like hockey and soccer, right? Okay, so we get five in the middle. We know we didn't make a mistake if we add up all four spots and we get 45 back. If you add up all four spots and you don't get 45, you oopsie somewhere, right? Maybe you didn't put enough in the and, or maybe you just added and said it was 19 instead of 29, which has been a downfall of mine. So, hockey has five already in it. There were 20 tickets. How many did hockey only? 15. And then soccer, 14 tickets went in, but there's already five who are also playing hockey. So how many? Nine. Okay. So we still have to do use notation, it says. So determine how many students like hockey and soccer. So I'm going to say... Let H represent, and you can use short form rep, because in math you can, hockey. And let S, that's what you know, S represent soccer. So that I don't have to write out the words. So how many people, and how many people liked hockey and soccer? What shape is N? The eyeball. And we figured it out. How many was it? Five. Now it says, determine how many students liked only hockey or only soccer. So we have to do them separately. How do I represent only hockey? Do we remember how to do that? Hockey. We need the crescent moon if it's only hockey. H and not, H and not S. And how many was that? 50. I also need soccer only. How do I do that? S and not H. And how many is that? And what do I do with those two numbers? Add them. 15 plus 9 is 20. And if this was a written response on a test, we would make sure every single one of these had a what? Starts with an S. Yeah. Sentence. Sentence. Every single one. It's a written response. You have sentences. You explain yourself. Okay? And then we drew the Venn diagram already. Your homework is in the workbook, so this blue workbook, page 23 to 26, numbers 1 to 12. You work hard, you will finish it, because I'm giving you the rest of the class. Work. Yeah, yeah. Okay.